Disclaimer. All information is directly pulled from the most current listings of United States codes at the time of uploading. No person should take the information or interpretations presented here as legal advice, or advice of any kind. All legal research or request for legal interpretations should be done individually as all information presented can be changed at any moment. A bill titled Maintaining Our Ironclad Commitment to Israel Security Act was introduced by Texas Rep. Michael McCall on May 16, 2024. In this bill Congress states the Biden administration failed to uphold a previous agreement to support Israel by withholding approximately 3,500 artillery loads in May PF 2024. Congress states this was done without consulting Congress and against public opinion. This bill goes on to state that Congress believes in the right of Israel to defend itself with offensive capabilities, like having weapons and artillery, and that previous agreements with the United States should be upheld. Anything other than continuing with the agreed sales of defense artillery would be bad for international relations and regional stability. Congress will use this bill to move forward with the sale and delivery of armaments to Israel by preventing the president from stopping those deliveries without good reason, as determined by Congress. The president must provide that good reason to Congress no less than 15 days before enforcing the delay. This justification must include items like who the delivery is going to, what items are for delivery, the actual reason for the delay, reasons the delay can be overturned, what money pools are being used to deliver the armaments, a list of agreements related to the delivery, and a description of any poor outcomes for Israel caused by making this delay. The president will not be allowed to stop the delivery or do anything to prevent the delivery during the 15-day review period. The decision by Congress cannot be overturned or questioned for at least 10 days after the decision is made. This disapproval is in the form of a joint resolution, and is a document that is written by Congress. Once the joint resolution document is finalized, the President is again restricted from overturning the decision for another 12 days, without an official veto of the joint resolution. If the President does veto the resolution, they still can't take any action for 10 days while Congress reconsiders the decision and whether or not to pass it anyway. Once the joint resolution is fully approved and finalized, the President may not make any delay or stoppage to the delivery of armaments to Israel for 180 days, and will have to submit a new justification proposal once that 180 days has gone by. Section F, Part 1, Lines A and B describe the structure of the Joint Resolution of Disapproval. This joint resolution can be introduced in either House of Congress by either majority or minority leader of each House, within the 15 days of the delay being proposed. Each committee of the House of Representatives has five days to submit a report on the joint resolution or they are removed from voting on the joint resolution. Starting three days after all committees have either given their report or were removed from voting due to failure to give the report, the House of Representatives will start voting on approving this joint resolution. The voting on this joint resolution is required and any actions to stop the voting are not allowed. Once the voting is complete, it is final, and a second reconsideration is not allowed. The joint resolution will be discussed for two hours, which will be equally shared by the representative who proposed the motion and another representative who is against it, one hour each. The Senate will also consider the joint resolution, both when it is created in the Senate originally or passed the House of Representatives and sent to the Senate. The Committee on Foreign Relations has five days to provide a report on the joint resolution or they will be removed from the vote. Starting after the Committee on Foreign Relations has either given their report or were removed from voting due to failure to give the report, the Senate will start voting on approving this joint resolution. The voting on this joint resolution is required and any actions to stop the voting are not allowed. Once the voting is complete, it is final, and a second reconsideration is not allowed. Any appeals to the chair of the Senate will be final. If a veto is given by the President, the Senate will debate the acceptance of this veto with 10 hours of debate equally split between the majority leader and the minority leader, or their designated stand-in senators. 
If one House of Congress gets a joint resolution before they pass the one they started, the other joint resolution will not go to a committee first, the receiving House of Congress will move forward as if no joint resolution was given to them by the other House, and the vote in the receiving House of Congress will be aimed at the received joint resolution. If one House of Congress gets a joint resolution before they start their own, that joint resolution will move to voting as fast as possible. The final part of this bill explains that the rules set forth in this bill do not remove or increase the constitutional right of Congress to change their rules or process laws in the same manner they do before the bill is passed. Primary impact The most prominent impact and most direct effect of this bill will be an increased delivery amount of military armaments to the military of Israel in their fight against Palestine. It is nature of this channel and these explanations to remain as unbiased as possible, so I will not be commenting on if that is a good or bad action from a moral standpoint. From a geopolitical standpoint, this will strengthen our relationships with Israel and countries that are in support of Israel by providing them armaments to gain an advantage in the conflicts. Secondary impact, this bill will set what is known as a precedent if it is passed. A precedent is a legal term for a result or ruling of a case that is used in future cases to help make the decision. There are many laws that are created as a result of a previous case being ruled a certain way in the past, regardless of circumstance. If this bill is passed, Congress will have again a new power, even though it is a very specific one for now. That power is the ability to take the deciding power away from the executive branch. This is not a new power, by any means. In the Constitution, the Congress has always had the ability to overrule the veto from the President. Now, however, the overturning of a decision is driven by a very specific social movement, in terms of within the United States. This bill, though gives very specific parameters that restrict the executive branch even further than before with imposed time limits and new requirements to propose a decision. This could very easily lead down a slippery slope of more power being given to the Congress. It is possible that the Supreme Court could rule that bill unconstitutional, since the Constitution does already provide for this type of action, however, that is not a guarantee. I am not a lawyer, a politician, a representative of the United States government, or an expert in any field related to any of the information being presented here. I am merely a concerned citizen hoping to bring the rules that dictate our country to light in an easier to understand fashion than is being presented to us currently. Thank you. Please go to the Office of the Law Revision Council for a complete list of up-to-date versions of United States codes. The link is in the description below. https colon slash slash us code Please like and subscribe for more releases and updates.